apologetics, and current events. From the housetops, coming up next. Combating the Rise of Satanism In an article that appeared in From the Center, a newsletter for friends and benefactors of St. Benedict's Center, Brother Thomas Augustine, superior of the Slaves of the Immaculate Heart of Mary in Still River, addresses this very important topic of the rise of Satanism. He writes, When Christ was born, the world was at peace and yet in a very sad state. Pagan Rome and its tributary states were sunk in immorality and perverse love, as decried by St. Paul in his epistle to the Romans. Idolatry was actually demonolatry, promoting every kind of depravity. All the gods of the Gentiles are devils. Psalm 95.5 The chosen people alone worshipped the true God and yet had a false belief of the Messiah to come. Even in the land flowing with milk and honey, Satan and his devils roamed freely and possessed persons. Our Lord came down to restore mankind to its original dignity. He reestablished marriage, as it was in the beginning, between one man and one woman for life. He condemned even the thought of committing adultery. He drove out devils from the possessed no less than twelve times and established that God must be adored not only in Jerusalem, but in every corner of the world, in spirit and in truth. John 4.23 He laid the foundations of his heavenly kingdom. Like a mustard seed, it grew and became a great tree, as he said it would. Luke 13.19 But what has happened? Today, Christ and his teachings have been banished from society, from our schools, from our laws, and our courts, from the marketplace, and the earth has returned to its old ways. This week, Satan is raising his head in Boston. The Satanic Temple is boasting of the largest convention of Satanists ever for, quote, a weekend of blasphemy, end quote. Topics for the sessions will include hellbillies, visible Satanism in rural America, Deconstructing Your Religious Upbringing, Reclaiming the Trans Body, Sins of the Flesh, Satanism, and Self-Pleasure. The blasphemies began on the Feast of St. Louis de Montfort, Friday, April 28th. Montfort prophesied, quote, The devil, knowing that he has but little time, and now less than ever to destroy souls, will every day redouble his efforts and his combats, end quote. We know that eventually Satan will lose. This time, however, he will be put down by the Holy Mother of our Lord and her devotees. She will crush his head, as God promised Adam and Eve in Genesis 3.15. St. Louis explains, The most terrible of all the enemies which God has set up against the devil is his Holy Mother Mary. Because Satan, being proud, suffers infinitely more from being beaten and punished by a little and humble handmaid of God and her humility humbles him more than the divine power, end quote. His prophecy continues, quote, But the power of Mary over all the devils will especially shine forth in the latter times, when Satan will lay his snares against her heel, that is to say, her humble slaves and her poor children, whom she will raise up to make war against him, end quote. Brother Thomas continues, For too long many have thought that evil and the sins of others do not affect them, However, evil unchecked spreads naturally, and when the government promotes immorality, crimes against nature, as we see currently, all of society suffers. Even the best of its members. How many friends and families do you know who are adversely affected, directly or indirectly, by abortion, perversion, divorce, and drugs? All of us are our brother's keeper. We are at a stage where the devil cannot be cast out but by prayer and fasting, as our Lord said. We can all call upon the infinite merits of our Lord by attending Mass, praying the Rosary and meditating upon its mysteries, and we can make reparation by fasting and making sacrifices. Our Blessed Mother said, In the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. We are invited to join forces with her and be part of her army set in battle array by consecrating ourselves to her in the manner set forth by St. Louis de Montfort in his treatise, True Devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. To order your copy of Montfort's True Devotion to Mary and the Manual for Total Consecration to Mary, go to truedevotionals.com. To receive the From the Center newsletter, go to info at saintbenedict.com. S-A-I-N-T. 
B-E-N-E-D-I-C-T dot com. Our Quest for Happiness Ever since the fall of Adam, men have found the high road to happiness beset by dangers. Enemies lurk along the path, putting obstacles in our way, intent on preventing us from reaching the goal. The chief enemies of our happiness are the devil, the world, and the flesh. We will take each of these, see what tactics they employ, and the means we must use to oppose and overcome them. The demons hate God. Hating God, they hate all his creatures. They even hate one another. But most especially, they hate us. Filled with this hatred, springing from envy and jealousy, they use every means in their power to spoil God's work and drag us down to hell with them. It was Satan who lured the first human beings into sin, and who, therefore, was instrumental in killing the supernatural life in their souls. Christ said this of him, so it is true. He was a murderer from the beginning. John 8.44 The demons still retained the bright intellects and the powerful wills of the angelic nature. These were not weakened by their sin, and they are far superior to those of a human being. Moreover, the devils know human nature well, with its failings and weaknesses. They have been watching mankind and testing the success of various tactics for these thousands of years. Man, on the other hand, lives but a brief span, is less experienced and less clever. The devil has power to influence the imagination and the physical organism, but not directly to influence the will. Fortunately, Satan and his cohorts are limited in their power over mankind. They can plot, plan, and tempt only as far as God permits. The devils, of course, are always in the torments of hell, but God allows them a certain liberty to roam the world, to exert their power, and to tempt men. St. Peter tells us that the devil goes about like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Though the intentions of the evil spirits are wicked, God's intention in allowing them freedom is good. God permits the devils to tempt us in order to prove and test our loyalty and to help us merit heaven. Moreover, God always gives sufficient grace to combat the devil successfully. The devil cannot tamper with the human intellect or will. Satan, however, can see what goes on in the imagination and memory. He can work on these two powers, that is, he can call up and suggest evil ideas and pictures. He can work also on the body and the senses. The devil knows many of our weaknesses, too, from watching our actions and therefore is helped in his selection of weapons against us. But, as one of the saints has said, the devil is like a chained dog. He cannot bite us unless we get too close to him. The influence of the devil can be suspected if the soul is deeply disturbed for a long period of time, if the temptation arouses a desire for spectacular mortifications, an inclination to be silent and secretive about the matter with our confessor, and distrustful of our superiors. St. Ignatius of Loyola lists the rules for the discernment of spirits in his spiritual exercises. St. Peter warns us to safeguard ourselves against Satan by vigilance and self-denial, and not to allow ourselves to be discouraged by temptation, because it is the common lot of man. Be sober and watchful, he says, for your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, goes about seeking someone to devour. Resist ye him, strong in the faith, knowing that the same suffering befalls your brethren. 1 Peter chapter 5 There are a few other things we should know about Satan and his legions. One cannot believe the devil. He is the father of lies. Recall how he lied to Eve. He can even quote scripture to his own purpose. Christ said of this fallen angel, He has not stood in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he tells us a lie, he speaks from his very nature. For he is a liar and the father of lies. John 8.44 Satan even goes so far sometimes as to appear in the guise of an angel of light, for he knows that many will not listen to him if he comes out in his true colors. At times he uses other human beings as his instruments. The devil, besides being a sneak, is a coward as well. He plays in the weaknesses of man. He goes about like a roaring lion in order to frighten the weak. But even a little child could put him to flight with holy water, the sign of the cross, or the names of Jesus and Mary. The Blessed Sacrament also frightens him away. We'll be back with more from the housetops 
after this break. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak from Hawaii. I'm a world champion surfer, and I have the Deep Adventure cast. And when I want to ride the wave of the Holy Spirit, I tune in to WQPH 89.3 FM. Aloha. If there was just some proof, I would believe it. Is that your view on religion? St. Anthony of Padua Parish in New Bedford wants you to know God still speaks to us today through signs and miracles, real events that you can witness with your own eyes, facts that have no natural scientific explanation. Come and see for yourself as evangelist Tim Francis presents the evidence of miracles and their powerful effect on your faith. Hello, my name is Tim Francis, and wow, do I got a story to tell you. I get to travel the country telling the greatest story that hardly anybody has heard. In fact, when I first heard this, I said, why is this not on Oprah? Why is this not on Larry King? Why isn't it on Pierce Morgan? This is the story of a famous TV journalist who along with a scientist and attorney filmed and recorded what has never been filmed in the history of mankind. All three were atheists. All three are now devout Roman Catholics who travel the world showing that science can definitely validate faith. In Tim's presentation, you'll hear about and see film documentation of miracles. You're going to witness the lady experience the wounds of Jesus Christ and a modern person. This is not 1300 years ago. Today, you're going to witness this. You're going to see a statue of Jesus Christ that cries and bleeds. And you're going to witness a piece of wheat bread that turns into living heart tissue. All of this has tremendous meaning. There's a message behind every miracle. Stir up your faith with signs from God, miracles, and their meaning at St. Anthony of Padua Catholic Church in New Bedford, May 22nd through the 24th, from 6.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. Same presentation, three evenings. There is no charge. For more information, call 508-993-1691 or go to stanthonynewbedford.com. Hi, this is Peter and Jeremy of Your Prayer Intentions reminding you that if you want to get a prayer request to us, there are many ways to do it. You can email us at wqph893 at comcast.net. That's wqph893 at comcast.net. You can tweet us at Radio WQPH. That's Radio WQPH. You can post your prayer request on our prayer wall so that many people can pray for it. That's at wqphradio.org slash prayer wall. Or if you're not a computer person, you can call us at 978-343-0893. 978-343-0893. For private prayer intention, simply say or send the word private. And we hope to catch you every Saturday at noon on Your Prayer Intentions right here on WQPH Radio. Goodbye and God bless you all. Holy Scripture and the traditions of all nations confirm the existence of angels. Who are these heavenly powers whose mysterious combat heads the first page of history? Apocalypse chapter 12 describes a great battle in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. Michael is the glorious archangel at the head of the heavenly army. He is the greatest and most powerful of all God's angels. His name means who is like to God. This was the challenge he issued to Lucifer when Lucifer offended God and was hurled by St. Michael out of heaven and into hell. St. Michael is one of the seven angels who stand before the throne of God. He is the special angel of St. Joseph and is along with him protector of the universal church. The prayer to St. Michael composed by Pope Leo XIII calls upon the great archangel to defend the faithful from the attacks of the devil. On October 13, 1884, it was revealed to Pope Leo that Satan was determined to redouble his efforts to destroy the church within 75 to 100 years. The pontiff knew that the gates of hell will never prevail against the church. Nevertheless, he took decisive measures to thwart the assaults of our angelic enemies by writing a lengthy prayer to St. Michael with an abbreviated version to be recited after each low mass. The prayer is, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. 
be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. Rebuke him, O God, we humbly beseech thee. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. St. Michael, pray for us. This program was produced by From the Housetops Audio, Still River, Massachusetts. Hello, friends. This is Father Wade Menezes with the Fathers of Mercy and EWTN, and I want to thank you for listening to Queen of Perpetual Help Radio, WQPH 89.3 FM. The temptations which are caused by the devil soliciting the soul to commit sin might be called Satan's major tactics. Such moral attacks or temptations are more frequent, dangerous, and important than the special and spectacular means he is sometimes permitted to use against man. These special tactics employed by the devil are physical attacks known as obsession and possession. God sometimes allows the devil to attack and torment a person externally, for example, by means of kicks or blows, or by causing external annoyances. This is called obsession. Job is the famous Old Testament example of obsession by Satan. You may find other examples in the lives of the saints, for example, the curia of ours. When God permits the devil to enter the body of a person, we call it possession. When the devil inhabits the body of a human being, he seizes control of all the bodily powers, but not of the intellect and the will, which he cannot touch. Therefore, the words and acts of a person during actual possession are those of the devil. Unless the person, however, has freely given entrance to Satan, he is not responsible for what Satan does. We have any number of examples of possession in the New Testament. Today, because of the rise of paganism and devil worship, possession is increasing. The spread of evil is greatly restrained, where the Blessed Sacrament is reserved on countless altars. There are reasons for believing that depraved men, drunk with pride, hate, and lust for power, are being guided by the powers of hell in their attacks on God and on His Church, on religion and religious education. In his encyclical on atheistic communism, Pope Pius XI refers to communism as a satanic scourge. We must fight such men with faith, humility, love, and every Christian virtue. We must not hate them. We are not allowed to hate anyone, not even evil persons. But we can and we must hate the evil they do and teach. God permits possession as a punishment for sin, Yet it does not follow that all who are possessed necessarily bring it on themselves by serious sin. For Satan has been permitted to possess holy persons for a time. More often, however, the possessed person is guilty of some grave wrongdoing. Devils are driven out of possessed persons by the exorcism or commands of a priest or bishop. The express permission of the bishop must be obtained to perform an exorcism. Satan cannot be blamed for being the cause of most of our temptations. In general, he can count on the world and our own evil inclinations to keep us busy enough. Nevertheless, we cannot afford to forget the existence of the devil, as so many people are doing today, a fact very much to the devil's satisfaction. Not only the devil, but also the world, seeks to keep us from reaching our goal. By the world, we mean those who are opposed to Jesus Christ and his principles those who are slaves of concupiscence, and those absorbed by the concerns of this life. The world spreads false ideas as to the aim of life and the nature of true happiness. It mocks, threatens, and persecutes. In one way, the world is a more dangerous foe than the devil, because its influence is all about us. We scarcely realize it, and therefore we are not afraid of it. The world promises success and holds out allurements to pride, vanity, love of honors, power, desire for riches, display, and fine dress. Its seemingly limitless temptations and seductions are broadcast by literature, movies, radio, television, internet, and so many other sources. The world sets up its own standards and establishes its own customs, practices, and fashions. It pursues its own earthly interests, as if there were no life beyond this one. We often follow along without realizing that we are being enticed by the world. The spirit of the world is the general desire of seeking the things of this earth 
for themselves. If we care for nothing except a round of exciting amusements and a general wasting of time, if we are always seeking our own ease and comfort, even at the expense of others, if we are careless in the choice of companions, books, and places of amusement, if we are afraid of little sacrifices and inconveniences, or if we shirk serious application to our obligations and duties, then worldliness comes over us. True Devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary It is principally of these last and cruel persecutions of the devil, which shall go on increasing daily to the reign of Antichrist, that we ought to understand the first and celebrated prediction and curse of God pronounced in the terrestrial paradise against the serpent. It is to our purpose to explain this here for the glory of the Most Holy Virgin, for the salvation of her children, and for the confusion of the devil. Genesis 3.15 I will put enmities between thee and the woman, and thy seed and her seed. She shall crush thy head, and thou shalt lie in wait for her heel. God has never made and formed but one enmity, but it is an irreconcilable one, which shall endure and grow even to the end. It is between Mary, his most worthy mother, and the devil, between the children and the servants of the Blessed Virgin and the children and tools of Lucifer. The most terrible of all the enemies which God has set up against the devil is his holy mother Mary. He has inspired her, even since the days of the earthly paradise, though she existed then only in his idea, with so much hatred against the cursed enemy of God, with so much ingenuity in unveiling the malice of that ancient serpent, with so much power to conquer, to overthrow, and to crush that proud, impious rebel, that he fears her not only more than all angels and men, but in a sense more than God himself. Not that the anger, the hatred, and the power of God are not infinitely greater than those of the Blessed Virgin, for the perfections of Mary are limited. But first, because Satan, being proud, suffers infinitely more from being beaten and punished by a little humble handmaid of God, and her humility humbles him more than the divine power. And secondly, because God has given Mary such great power against the devils that, as they have been often obliged to confess in spite of themselves by the mouths of the possessed, they fear one of her sighs for a soul more than the prayers of all the saints, and one of her threats against them more than all other torments. What Lucifer has lost by pride, Mary has gained by humility. What Eve has damned and lost by disobedience, Mary has saved by obedience. Eve, in obeying the serpent, has destroyed all her children together with herself and has delivered them to him. Mary, in being perfectly faithful to God, has saved all her children and servants together with herself and has consecrated them to his majesty. God has not only set an enmity, but enmities, not simply between Mary and the devil, but between the race of the Holy Virgin and the race of the devil. That is to say, God has set enmities, antipathies, and secret hatreds between the true children and servants of Mary and the children and slaves of the devil. They have no love for each other. They have no sympathy for each other. The children of Belial, the slaves of Satan, the friends of the world, for it is the same thing, have always up to this time persecuted those who belong to our Blessed Lady, and will in the future persecute them more than ever, just as Cain of old persecuted his brother Abel and Esau his brother Jacob, who are the figures of the reprobate and the predestinate. But the humble Mary will always have the victory over the proud spirit, and so great a victory that she will go so far as to crush his head where his pride dwells. She will always discover the malice of the serpent. She will always lay bare his infernal plots and dissipate his diabolical counsels, and even to the end of time will guard her faithful servants from his cruel claw. But the power of Mary over all the devils will especially shine forth in the latter times, when Satan will lay his snares against her heel, that is to say, her humble slaves and her poor children, whom she will raise up to make war against him. They shall be little and poor in the world's esteem, and abased before all like the heel, trodden underfoot and persecuted as the heel is by the other members of the body. 
But in return for this, they shall be rich in the grace of God, which Mary shall distribute to them abundantly. They shall be great and exalted before God in sanctity, superior to all creatures by their lively zeal, and so well sustained with God's assistance, that with the humility of their heel, in union with Mary, they shall crush the head of the devil and cause Jesus Christ to triumph. Here's something from Hammond's Meditations, The False Maxims of the World. The best proof of the falsity of worldly maxims is that they are in direct opposition to the maxims of the eternal truth, which is Jesus Christ. For first, the world says, If honors present themselves to you, refuse them not. If they do not come to you, then seek them. Happy is he who is honored, applauded, and who marches forward to glory. Miserable is he who drags along an obscure life and without splendor. Jesus Christ says, on the contrary, Happy are the humble. Happy are those who are persecuted for justice' sake. Happy those of whom a great deal of evil is said, if they suffer with patience and resignation. Happy those who do not blush at practicing religion and at being confounded with the common herd. Second, the world says, A man must be insensible not to love pleasures and not to enjoy them when he can. Happy those who wish for them, who laugh, who amuse themselves, and whose days and nights are spent in enjoyment. Unhappy is the man who is in affliction. Jesus Christ says, on the contrary, Happy are those who suffer and who weep, because a day will come in which their tears will be changed into joy. And woe to you who laugh and have your consolation in this world. Third, the world says, A man must be a fool to love poverty and prefer it to riches. Happy the rich man who wants for nothing and obtains all that he desires, who sits down every day at a splendid table and can satisfy all his tastes, who inhabits beautiful palaces fitted with all the inventions of effeminacy and luxury, who rambles over his vast domains in his leisure moments while saying to himself, All this belongs to me. Jesus Christ says, on the contrary, Woe to ye rich who have your enjoyments in this world, because it is written that the wicked rich man died and was buried in hell. But happy the poor who know how to bear privation and poverty, because the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Lastly, the world says, A man must make himself happy here below at all costs. That is his great affair. Jesus Christ, on the contrary, says, Your great, your only affair is to save yourself. Happiness is not for this present life, it is for the future life. It will serve you nothing to gain the whole universe if you lose your soul. Such are the contrary maxims of Jesus Christ and of the world. They cannot be both true. Either the world deceives itself or Jesus Christ deceives himself. The world may choose to say that Jesus Christ is wrong, that his cross is folly. Thou art beside thyself, said a great man of the world to St. Paul. Dare we say the same? From the House Stops is produced by the slaves of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Still River, Massachusetts.